Welcome everyone to the Women's Series Stepladder Competition of the 2022 Bowling Promotion Strike Tour Series. Here you see the 18 game qualifying scores for the top 10 women qualifiers. And we see that USA's Daniel McEwen dominated the qualifying with a 229 average, giving her the number one seed. Second was USA's Liz Johnson. And our third and fourth qualifiers, Clara Guerrero and Lindsay Boomershine, will face off in this first stepladder match. Lindsay Boomershine of the USA will kick things off on the left lane. And here you will see Marc Chavez and Bruno Bedone, who are the French commentators for the Strike Tour series. My name is Bruce Hall, and I'm your international commentator for these matches. It's my privilege to be calling these matches for you and their international version. Lindsay, as we said, will kick things off on the left lane. Lindsay, of course, has yet to win on the PWBA Tour, but has many top 10 and top 5 finishes, many TV appearances, no stranger to TV. She kicks things off on the left lane, coming up a little bit light for a 2-pin, and she will need to make an adjustment on that lane. In general, this pair, the right lane, has proven to be a little bit more sluggish down lane, so we'll have to see how the professionals adapt to that right lane compared to the left. The left lane turns up a little bit harder and is a little bit easier to strike on. We are in a gateway arch, 42 foot, six to one oil pattern. So a fair bit of ratio to work with here on the lane. We do expect both bowlers to pretty much be in the pocket for most shots. And it might be just a matter of who can figure out carry and who can get the ball to go through the pins the right way. And there's a no problem on the two-pin spare by Lindsay Boomershine. Here is Clara Guerrero, of course, a 20-year Team Columbia member and one of the most decorated international players of all time. She has 25 gold medals in international competition and many, many more silver and bronze medals. She's also a fixture on the PWBA Tour. And there's a shot up the third arrow on that right lane, and here we see it right away. And there is Clara leaving a week 10. And we'll see how she copes with that. Again, this right lane giving us the little bit of sluggishness down lane and a little bit harder to carry. Let's see how the bowlers adapt to that. Of course, the PWBA Tour back in full swing now with uh, backing from the USBC and on Bull TV. And great to see the ladies with a good venue in which to compete and there's no problem with the plastic spare ball Clara covering the 10 pin and Clara will move over to this left lane and let's see how she does Clara of course uh, has won PWBA title in 2016 she won the players championship and in 2022 she was the Queen's number one seed finishing second to Bridget Norix of Germany. So Clara, no stranger again, like Lindsay, to TV and the pressure of the TV lights. Looks like both bowlers using the same equipment. Looks like a night road there. I want to see if there's a little difference in surface here. Here is Clara on this left lane, and she gets it out. Now look at the way the ball turns up through the pocket. Again, that left lane a little bit more forgiving relative to the back end and a little bit easier to strike on. That's right over the 14th board. Pretty much the same shot she threw on the right lane, only this lane turns up and carries perfectly in the pocket. Great shot there. So again, we look at Lindsay's ball. I think there's a little bit less shine on her night road. They're both using the same equipment from Storm and Night Road, and both have the pin up, so they certainly have assessed the best way to play this gateway arch pattern. And now Lindsay on the right lane gets it to the right a little bit. And again, she's light. That's going to be two light hits in a row. And we'll give her now the two pin deficit based on the two four leave. And let's see if Lindsay moves to the mix spare ball to go cross lane at this two four. I believe she will do that. Lindsay had a breakout year in 2005 attending Nebraska, where she was the Rookie of the Year. She was the first team All-American, and they were NCAA champions that year. So quite the year for Lindsay Boomershine, 2005 at Nebraska, and of course uh, went on to have a, a, a storied college career there. And of course, 
as we said, no stranger to a stepladder. It's just a matter of time before she wins on the PWBA Tour. And Lindsay, of course, married to husband Hank Boomershine, who's the VP of Sales and R&D at Storm. So she's well, well connected within the industry. And, uh, of course, a fine player in her own right. Let's see how she does on this left lane now. And yeah, pretty good shot just inside of third arrow. Dead flush in the pocket. Beautiful shot. And there again is that left lane yielding the strikes a little bit more so than the right lane. Got that finish position. Beautiful knee bend. Gets through the shot. Watching it down the lane. Carrie, thank you very much. And let's get on the board with a strike here. Now, can Clara conquer this right lane and get a double to take the early lead in the match? Look at that focus. And a little bit outside. Uses the dry to come up. Those had a pretty good pocket angle, but this time leaves the solid 10 pin. So we've had a weak 10 and a solid 10 on that right lane for Clara. Two good shots. Look at that knee bend. Nice and firm at the line, nice and low. Getting all the power into the ball, but just not quite enough to climb the hill and carry that 10 pin, the six wrapping around it. Again, moving to the ice. Ball and cross lane for the 10 pin conversion. Shout out to Bruno Bedone, who, of course, is the promoter and organizer of these strike tour series, the bowling promotion tour, and he is setting up and taking entries for the 2023 tour right now. The filming occurs in the last two weeks of September. It's a beautiful tour of the beautiful French countryside, a number of different bowling venues. As you saw, the ladies bowled 18 games of qualifying to get to this point. And the winner of this match, of course, moving on to face Liz Johnson. So you can learn about that by just checking out the bowling promotion website. And here we are in the left lane now. Will the left lane yield another strike for Clara Guerrero? Gets that a little bit out to the right, but it comes up and rips the rack. And maybe that light hit might be the key to the right lane as well. Good shot there by, by Clara. Of course, Bruno organizes the Strike Tour Series, which is a special event organized by Bowling Promotion for the French Federation and the French Olympic Sport Channel for the promotion of bowling in general and the French teams specifically. And this, of course, is the women's stepladder competition. The winner here faces Liz Johnson. The winner of that match faces number one seed, Danielle McEwen, both Liz and Danielle from the U.S. Here's Lindsay on this right lane. Can she figure out a way to double on it? Goes up at it, comes up light, and the mixer shot gives her the double and the early lead for Lindsay Boomershine. I think that's a more reliable hit as we saw on the left lane with Clara. Now it comes up late and mixes the pins, takes out the four, five, seven, and there's the double for Lindsay Boomershine. I want to give a shout-out and congratulations to Team Vega for winning the Baker team event, captained by the incomparable Matt McNeil. And, of course, Dennis Grunheide defeated Daniel McEwen to win the singles series competition. So we've had team and singles competition, and now we're featuring the women's step ladder. Again, all on this Bowling Promotion YouTube channel, so if you'd hit that like button and subscribe... You'll get notified when new vo new videos are posted. And that was a beautiful shot by Lindsay. Comes up a little bit late for the solid 10. Again, I don't think either bowler is going to really crack it open here. I think it's just too hard to carry. You've got a 42-foot pattern. You've got a fair bit of oil in the middle. Um, you have some recovery in the outside, but you don't have a big snap out there. So it's difficult to consistently get the ball going through the pins the right way. 
And now Lindsay will move over with her mix. Spare ball that actually has a bit of urethane in it, that mix. So sometimes it does come into play on extremely dry conditions. And good shot there by Lindsay converting the 10 pin. We are clean through our first nine frames here. Now can Clara get up and once again figure out this right lane? And can she strike? Get the double and take the lead in the match. It's a seven pin lead right now for Lindsay Boomershine. Gets herself lined up. And she, what's going through her mind? Do we throw a little slower? Do we try to hit it a little harder? And a beautiful shot gets through it. And once again, a solid 10. Frustrating. You could see it in her body language there. She's really knew she threw that very well. And now what happens? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, you nasty 10 pin. Six around the 10 in the gutter. Just cannot crack this right lane. And once again, she moves over to the ice. Spare ball. Three 10 pins in a row on the right lane for Clara Guerrero. You can see she's moved a little bit each time. They, they're, she's left a weak 10 and then a solid 10, another solid 10. So she's working on it. And, you know, it's a little game of cat and mouse we play sometimes when we're trying to figure out how to carry on one particular lane. It's frustrating when you have one lane and not the other because you're hitting the pocket the whole time and yet you're bowling only at a Dutch 200 pace, which is exactly where Clara is right now. Clara made the PBA Tour, the men's TV show in 2013, the Cheetah Championship. She's one of only three women to do it. Liz Johnson, of course, the other, and uh, Kelly Kulik won the Tournament of Champions. In the men's tour. There's a slap 10 carry by Clara Guerrera. Good shot there, and once again keeps the Dutch 200 alive with 100 in the fifth. And Lindsay now with 107 in the fifth where she to strike in the sixth frame. So seven pin match. Look at the six pin. Kick off the corner. Kick out that 10. That means you've got the ball going through the pins the right way. Turning in through the pocket. Again, the left lane a little bit more accommodating relative to carry. We have not seen either bowler miss the pocket since Lindsay's couple of light hits at the beginning. And let's see how this match plays out. Goes against now that's straight up the lane and a high hard one for Lindsay Boomershine right up 15 and maybe out to 13 and the pocket of course is at board 17 so not a lot of hook on this shot goes straight at it and I think a winning strategy here watch this ball goes straight up the lane right over 15 maybe out to 12 13 maybe turns up and dead flush in the pocket. Beautiful shot there by Lindsay Boomershine. Not taking any chances. Letting the ball out to the right. Go straight up at the pocket. I think that's a winning strategy if she can keep it in play on that right lane. Once again, you see there's a little bit of dullness to her night road. Uh, both bowlers with the same equipment and with a pretty much the same drilling with the pin up over the fingers. That will give you a little bit later read uh, and a little bit more read off the friction. And, of course, it depends on their individual uh, PAP or their individual roll points, but the balls will, are, are designed to basically do the same thing. So can she double up here? Gets it up the pocket. Beautiful. Uses the same strategy on the right lane. That's another double for Lindsay Boomershine and extends her lead now to 17 pins, the biggest lead she's had in this match. And now Clara almost forcing the issue now. Pretty much must figure out this right lane. She's got three strikes on the left lane and three ten pins on the right lane. And if she wants to keep up in this match, she's got to figure this out right now. Let's see what she does. Does she move her feet to the right? Does she go straighter? Try to hit it a little harder? Change her hand position? Lots of tools to work with. I think she moved right. Good shot. Goes up, slaps the ten. There's the double for Clara that she's been looking for. I think she moved everything to the right, maybe two and two right, something like that. The ball looked like it crossed about the 12 or 13 board. 
and picked up a little bit of dry, turned up through the pocket. You can see the shot here. Now watch the ball get down lane, turns up through the pocket, gets that six pin to slap that 10 as opposed to dying in the gutter. So the right move, that's a pro move right there, working the subtle changes you have to make to figure out carry on this lane condition. So good job there by Clara. And now match back to seven pins in favor of Lindsay. Now, can Clara continue her run of strikes on the left lane, which will now give her the lead in the match? So this has been her good lane. However, how many times have you seen it? You have one lane, you finally figure out the other one, and you lose the first one. So let's see what she can do here to try to hang on to her look on this left lane. Gets it out. Beautiful shot. Comes up. And there's the... Oh, gets a roller. Almost rolls that 10 pin, but it's a weak 10. I don't know if she got a little fast with it, or maybe it's even breaking down a hair since both of these bowlers are in exactly the same spot. That crossed about 13, it looked like. Came out. Usually this left lane, I would expect it to give it a little bit of a roll. That was the 5 pin that rolled and rolled over and almost took out the 10, but no luck there. So Clara will now fall behind another pin and find herself eight pins in a rear to Lindsay. And again, no problem with the spare there. Both these bowlers impeccable on their spare shooting. So, again, Lindsay Boomershine now enjoying the eight pin lead and pacing at 217, Clara Guerrero pacing at 209. So Lindsay clearly in the driver's seat here as we approach the ending frames here of this first stepladder match. Once again, the winner faces Liz Johnson, USA's Hall of Famer, and the winner of that match facing Danielle McEwen. And great shot there. Uses the same direct approach. That one got a hair to the right, and now the six pin does lay in the channel for Lindsay. She's looking at it, looking at it. Please carry. Look at those eyes. Would you please carry for me? Thank you. No. Six pin in the corner. Six pin in the channel. No carry for Lindsay. Now needs to take that mix cross lane once again. Make another ten pin. I haven't even counted up the ten pins in this match so far. Four, five, I think about I think six ten pins so far in this match, and we are in the eighth frame. So quite a few uh, ten pins. It's really pretty much been that, other than what Lindsay missed in the first couple of frames. Now here we go, moving into the ninth and tenth. Lindsay cannot be shut out. She's got the seven pin lead. Both bowlers with spares up. And now Lindsay moving in. If she can somehow find a way to put three together here, she will win the match. She could not be shut out. Taking her time on this left lane. And where do I move? She struck here last time. Perfect strike. Let's see what happens in this frame. Threw it well, got it out. Oh, my lord. Looks like it kind of fell off her hand a little bit. It didn't look so bad at the line, but it just went kind of off to the right, never recovered. Went right, sailing right through the break point. Let's see what happens here. I think she loses it at the bottom a little bit. Never slows down, goes straight through for the washout. The 1, 2, 4, 10. A very tough leave, especially at this point in the match. Let's see what she can do to try to convert this washout. She's going to use her mix and go straight up the middle of the lane, try to push that head pin into the 10 pin. There it is. She hits the head pin. Oh, my Lord. What a bad break. Lindsay did her job. She, The head pin goes over to try to take out the 10, but it gets caught up in the gutter, leaving her open. And now 181 in the ninth leaving her a max of 211. Now, unless Clara can find a way to double, Lindsay can still double to win the match. So let's see what Clara does now 
on this right lane. Boy, what a bad break for Lindsay. She hit that head pin. It went over to the gutter and just got caught up in the gutter. Didn't quite catch that tempo. Usually when you hit a washout light like that, you see some bouncing around of that pin, and it will take out that 10 pin. And there's a strike by Clara doing her job in the ninth. And one more, and Clara can lock up this match here. She can figure out a way once again to strike on the left lane that was so good to her earlier in the match. I still can't get over that washout. It, Lindsay made such a good pass at it. The head pin just went into the gutter, did not help her out at all. Look at this shot. Turns up. That's what we call the can opener when you see the six pin lean over like that. And fairly reliable hit there for Guerrero. Needs this one to lock up the match. Can she do it? Again, this has been her good lane. Left a flat 10 last time. And gets it out. Turn it up. Turn it up. Oh, ring 10. Oh, my gosh. I believe that's our seventh 10 pin of this match. By the way, Mark Chavez will be interviewing Lindsay Boomershine, win or lose, at the end of this match, so stick around for that. Mark's uh, English accent is remarkable. If you've never heard it, it's worth listening to him just for that. He is the voice, of course, of the Tour de France in, uh, in, in, in France there, so a well-known broadcaster uh, in the country of France. And Lindsay got a break there. Uh, I think she knows it by that solid 10. That was a perfect shot by Clara in the pocket. Now Clara, max of 209, which means Lindsay will be able to get up and double to win this match. problem there on the 10 pin we are perfect in our spare shooting seven for seven on 10 pins on this pair she's shaking her head she says wow what do I have to do to get these pins to go down and let's see what she can do here count uh, not so important she's forcing Lindsay to double and right now Lindsay would need a double and eight to tie double and nine to win so nine doesn't seem to have been a problem uh, both bowlers living in the pocket, uh, mostly leaving 10 pins. Let's see what Clara can do here to fill up in the 10th frame. 209 with a strike. And why not? Another week 10. <laughs> 208 for Clara. Uh, I will tell you, that is a wonderfully bold 208. Uh, not a ball out of the pocket. One double. Made all of her spares, all of which were 10 pins. And uh, just a little bit frustrating trying to figure out to get the ball through the pins. And now it's all on Lindsay Boomershine. She needs a double here. She's been going straight and hard at the pocket here on this right lane, not even giving the sluggish back ends a chance to burn her. Let's see what she does here. Once again, needs a double and eight to win. Double and eight to win for Lindsay. And right up at it. Same strategy. Right up into the pocket. Slaps the 10 out. Beautiful shot. Just what she needed to do. And now we just need one more. And then eight for the win to face Liz Johnson. Anything less, it will be Clara Guerrero versus Johnson in our next match. Right over about 14 board, just about the same split of the board she did last time when she struck on this lane. Beautiful shot. And let's see what she can do here, taking her time. Get all that oil off the ball. It's, it's funny, with urethane, the oil stays on the outside of the ball, and uh, you reactive. Some of it at least absorbs it before you have a chance to wipe the oil off, so the oil actually goes inside the ball. Let's see how Lindsay does here. Needs this and eight to win. Must strike here. And that's right over 15. Pretty good shot, but it, oh, it turns up on her a little bit. Wow. That ball, maybe she got it right with her feet of hair. It looked like she hit her mark. But the ball seemed to turn a little bit. She's like, lay off, lay off, lay off. Oh, no thank you. And it will be Clara Guerrero moving on to face Liz Johnson in our next stepladder match here on this Bowling Promotion Tour channel. And no trouble on the spare for Lindsay. And she will finish out at 201. It's a 208 to 201 
nip and tuck battle back and forth. Just the one errant shot by Lindsay, but then made the shot she needed to to convert that washout. Just as was not rewarded. And a very, very good game bowled by both these competitors. Could have easily gone either way. You see five strikes for both Carrera Boomershine, five spares for Carrera Boomershine, and just the one washout by Lindsay. So please stick around for the interview, uh, and uh, we will see you next time. Liz Johnson against Clara Guerrero. Voilà, avec Lindsay Boomershine, donc, au terme de cette rencontre âprement disputée uh, face à Clara Guerrero, la victoire pour la Colombienne. Lindsay, we want to get a reaction here. Obviously, the foundation frame looking strong up until then. What happened at frame number nine? Um, I mean, this whole match isn't really my game. Um, I don't play as straight, uh, yeah. but I had to do what I had to do. Um, I got it out a little bit. It was a little firm, and it just went completely past the break point. And I thought I made the spare, uh, the washout. And then I just knew that I needed a double, so I came over to the 10th frame, and I thought I made two really good shots. Lane six is a lot tighter than five, um, just down lane. So I moved my eyes in a little bit. I wasn't going to miss the head pin. And, uh, you know, it was a really really good game except for for one shot so what can you do <laughs> C'était un très beau match. Il y a eu un seul coup finalement qui a fait toute la différence sur la fin de la rencontre. Je, je me suis mis un petit peu la pression sur à l'issue de la foundation frame, la frame 9, en rentrant à la 10. Je savais qu'il me fallait le doubler pour espérer aller plus loin. Ça n'est pas sorti. Il y avait évidemment ce blocage qu'on a évoqué un petit peu plus tôt. Mais bon, c'était un beau match quand même, malgré tout. Um, obviously, looking at that particular moment in time, what is, we saw when you were playing frame 10 on, after the first strike, there was, you were just loaded with emotion out there. Uh, maybe that motion, the release of the ball was a little bit different to what we saw you do beforehand. Is there something that justifies that uh, in particular? Or is it just a, a sort of a mental, something mentally going on at that particular moment? I think it's really hard to try to throw good shots when you need them. So the first one I really wanted to get, because that is going to give me a chance. If I didn't strike on that one, then I wouldn't even have a chance to win the match. So to me, um, I stay within myself, very quiet, very calm. I go through my same routine process every single shot, which I'm sure you saw. The approach is very slippery for me, so that's why I had to lick my shoe. Um, so to me, I did everything I possibly can. Just one bad shot, and uh, you know, I thought I gave myself a chance. Là, Lindsay nous explique qu'elle a fait tout ce qui était en sa capacité pour essayer d'aller au bout de l'effort, au bout de l'entreprise. Malheureusement, il y a eu ce coup qu'elle n'a pas réussi à trouver. Deuxième coup de la frame numéro 10. Voilà, elle a joué, elle a perdu. C'est ce qu'elle nous dit. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Merci beaucoup.